Hello everybody, um, today we are going to talk about some of the common anomalies that you might see during coronary angiogram. So far we have covered the normal views, uh, how you do you recognize the coronary arteries, various views, and on the last in the last talk we talked about the, the lesions. So as part of the normal coronary angiogram, you may come across some of the anomalies that you might see uh, and that if you have seen them, you will be able to easily recognize them. Um, so with that, we come on to the first anomaly that we will be talking about, which is called the myocardial bridging. On the left, you see a cine loop of a coronary angiogram probably through a radial axis, depict it uh, showing a left anterior descending artery. And I have shown in this picture A on the right. If you see this box, you will see probably, if you play, pay close attention to the to this coronary angiogram on the left, that there is with each systole the fading of the dye, the dye kind of fades away in that segment of the coronary artery where the rest of the coronary artery will appear darker. This particular segment of the left anterior descending artery with each beat of the heart will show that the dye is being milked out of it. So this is how Classically, they describe is called the milking away of the dye. The milking effect, like as if with each systole, the dye within the left anterior descending artery is, milk, is being milking away. As far as the incidence of myocardial bridging goes, um, it, is, it is by far more common than we find that in the cath lab. So in one case series they saw that about 40 to 80 percent of the patients might have some degree of myocardial bridging that can be identified on the autopsy. It might not be clinically significant depending on the length as well as the depth of the of the bridging. When we talked about the clinical presentation during an angiogram, the incidence is somewhere between 1 to 15 percent, depending on which literature you are reading. As far as the presentation goes, it is highly variable. It can be a spectrum of asymptomatic myocardial bridging all the way to the sudden cardiac death. So in between, you can have patients who can present with arrhythmias, they can present with chest pain, they can present with syncope. And as I said, it can be totally asymptomatic and be an incidental finding. Third thing, by far the most common artery that we see with the bridging is the left anterior descending coronary artery. And we know from anatomy that the LED supplies the left ventricle and the left ventricle by far is the, uh, is the chamber of the heart that causes the thickest myocardium and the LED has the longest course. So at some point, it might dive into the myocardium. So no surprise that this is the most common artery that you might see having a myocardial bridging. As far as the symptoms go, rarely if the, the bridging is less than fi five millimeter, it can be of any, it, it cannot be of any clinical significance it's when you have a longer segment of coronary artery involved that's when it can be hemodynamically significant and lead to the symptoms. So with that we move on to this picture A again here and if you see in this box I have drawn another picture a diagram which I'm labeled as B here. Here you see a coronary artery within the myocardium. So again, as we talked about, it depends upon the depth of the myocardial bridging as to how much um, 
the artery the coronary artery penetrates into the myocardium if it is a shallow edge, shelf on top of the coronary artery it might not be enough to compress the artery so we might not see uh, a significant angiographic findings as well as the clinical presentation but if the depth is too much or if the fibers are circumferential the myocardium is circumferential around the coronary artery and it is a long segment for example in this picture if it is a long segment then it can compress the coronary artery leading to the to the symptoms of chest pain shortness of breath and as we talked about the spectrum can be pretty extensive all the way from asymptomatic to a sudden cardiac death you don't have to know the classification but i just put it for the sake of completion um, one of the classification described is by the shorts called classification so shorts a which is an incidental finding where you do a normal coronary angiogram for a patient for some other reason and you see a myocardial bridging in some patients uh, the shorts b is when you do a stress test and you see a, uh, a area of ischemia and the patient goes for the coronary angiogram and then you see that the stress test kind of matches with the area where you have uh, the myocardial bridging last but not the least is a short c classification where the not only you see the myocardial bridging but is a hemodynamically significant meaning if, meaning if you do uh, some kind of uh, um, invasive study like an ultrasound intravascular ultrasound or if you see or if you do ffr you will see decreased blood flow across that lesion and that's what we call as a hemodynamic compromise or hemodynamically significant or short c type of myocardial bridging so with that we come on to the the management of these patients so once you did an angiogram now you found the patient's car got a myocardial bridging with a milking effect in the coronary artery as shown in the picture uh, as shown in the cine loop on the left what to do about it for the most part this patient might not need any treatment again it's a, it might be an incidental finding and uh, might not correlate with the patient's symptoms or might not correlate with the um, with the stress test that the patient might have but yes if you see that this the length of the lesion or the myocardial bridging is long or if you see that there is a prolonged ischemia with each systole and the patient symptoms kind of correlate with the findings then this patient might need attention again while we were talking about the short scores classification we talked about the ffr so if you have any doubt you can do an ffr across that and see if that myocardial bridging is significant or not last but not the least you can give intracoronary nitro to see how significant of the myocardial bridging is there so what will happen is with intracoronary nitroglycerin there will be shunting of the blood into the normal arteries or the branching vessels um, so kind of depriving the, my the, the myocardial bridging segment of the coronary artery so you might not see a lot of myocardial bridging but once you give them nitro the blood is shunted away from the lesion or the myocardial bridging and it might be more significant how do you manage these patients um, if the myocardial bridging is long and if you, if the depth and we talked about in picture b here if the myocardial bridge or the uh, the epicardial coronary artery is diving deep into the myocardium there could be surgical myectomy that can be considered so basically what the surgeons can do is they can de-shelf or take out that myocardium again coming back to picture b here i'm just going to erase this so the surgeons what they can do is they can uh, de-shelf the coronary artery so that there is no more 
myocardium circling the, the coronary artery. So that is one treatment uh, that can be considered. In some other cases, stenting of the segment can be considered if it is causing a lot of problem to the patient, but you have to, to keep in mind that there might be chances of stent fracture, especially if the, 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 the myocardial bridging is long and, and, the, the, and the coronary artery is diving, diving deep into the myocardium. When we come back to the physiology, uh, it's been shown that it's not the, usually the, the ischemia beyond the segment. Most of the time, because of the sheer stress and the change in hemodynamic before the segment of the myocardial bridging, in this case, I'm just putting this arrow here, in this segment of the coronary artery, just proximal to the to the myocardial bridging segment there might there will be more turbulence shear stress and there is increased atherosclerosis in these patients so something to watch out for i know we talked about the mechanical compression of the coronary artery but if it is a long segment with a deep penetration of the coronary artery the shear stress as well as the turbulence and the hemodynamic shift that can up happen before that artery drives deep into the myocardium can lead to increased atherosclerotic. We don't see that within the segment of the myocardial bridge or beyond the myocardial bridge. It's, pro it's usually the proximal segment before that myocardial bridge that you might see the, the rapid atherosclerotic process. So I hope it was helpful. Uh, in the next talk, we talk, we'll talk. we talk about another common anomaly that you might come across during coronary angiogram. Some of you have asked me if they can share these or post these videos for other colleagues. I have no um, objection against it. Um, I'll be more than happy if you want to share it with your colleagues who can benefit from it. And as I always say, we learn from each other. And if there is something that uh, we need to talk about it. I'd be happy to talk and discuss. You all have a very good day.